Good morning, everybody. So today in Mark's gospel, um, there's this beautiful picture of the woman that anoints Jesus. Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. Now the Passover and unleavened bread were two days away, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to seize him by stealth and kill him. For they were saying, not during the festival, otherwise there might be a riot of the people. While he was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, and reclining at the table, there came a woman with an alabaster vial, a very costly perfume of pure nard, and she broke the vial and pour it, poured it over his head. But some were indignantly remarking to one another, why has this perfume been wasted? For this perfume might have been sold for over 300 denarii and the money given to the poor, and they were scolding her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you bother her? She has done a good deed to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you, you do not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for the burial. Truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will always be spoken of in memory of her. And this is Mark verses four, chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. This is God's word. Father, I thank you for your holy word. I thank you for the gospels. I thank you that as our hearts are being prepared and primed and um, laid low in preparation of Easter. I pray that every scripture we read, every meditation, every prayer time, every Bible study at church would just be that preparation for the crescendo as we celebrate your life, death, and resurrection of Easter, Lord. We celebrate Resurrection Sunday every single day, but you know what I mean, Lord. It's a special season where we know that Easter's coming, and we just um, praise you for your holy word. We pray you would anoint um, the listening of your word, the meditation of your word and the insights. Holy Spirit, I want to decrease and I ask that you increase as I just share a couple thoughts with my brothers and sisters and then we jump into our intercession and prayer time. In Jesus name, amen. So I just wanted to share something that the Lord put on my heart about this woman. So it says that she took that alabaster vial and she, it was very costly perfume and she broke it and poured it over his head. And then verse nine, it says, truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be spoken of in memory of her. But if you go back up to verse three, it says a woman with an alabaster vial and, and it's the woman of Bethany, but we're not given her name. So I was thinking, you know, gosh, isn't it so cool how the Lord says that this is going to be her testimony, her legacy, and that this will be, uh, that, you know, wherever this gospel is preached, this, uh, what this woman has done will be spoken in memory of her, but we don't have her name. So some people call her the woman at Bethany, but I was thinking, I just kind of was picturing in my mind's eye where she wa walked around and said, I'm the alabaster vile girl. And what a beautiful testimony. What a beautiful name. You know, many of us have nicknames. When I went through middle school and high school, a lot of people called me Little Laura because, as you know, I'm I'm petite. I'm short in stature. And so, um, you know, just different people have different nicknames as they grow up. And so I thought, I remember a season um, at church thinking, Lord, I don't want to be known as the autism mom, as the mom walking around with her head low in pain because I have a child with autism. Now, you know, you guys know that I have a son with autism. A lot of people know that about myself, but I don't want to be known as the autism mom. I want to be known as a Jesus girl. And so I just thought how precious that this woman, you know, when people meet her, they might have said, how do you know Jesus? You know, like when you go to a funeral and they'll say, how do you know this person that went home to be with the Lord? And you say, oh, well, they, we were coworkers or, you know, that's my cousin or, you know, we served at church together or whatever. Like everybody has a reputation and a memory and something that is like a nickname or that connects us to others. And so I just thought this woman may have walked around and said, I'm the alabaster vile girl. And everybody would have known exactly who she was. She's the one that anointed Jesus. But lest she be pumped up with pride, 
God doesn't give her, you know, her specific name. She's just known as the woman that anointed him. And I just think that that's so beautiful. So we don't want to have pride, even in the good things that we do unto Jesus. So I pray that pride would never come into our life, but that we would always be mindful. Now, at the same token, isn't it wild that she's um, chastised and ridiculed for what she did? Uh, some were indign indignantly remarking to one another, why has this perfume been wasted? And this always makes me want to cry. So this is Mark 14, verse 4. They mocked her worship. And you know, I'm not Pentecostal, but I love to worship the Lord. I love to raise my hands. I often cry. I just get moved in my worship of Jesus. And it just gets me so sad that they mocked her. They mocked her. They mocked her. But she did not hold back. She gave him her everything because she loved him. And I pray that no matter, no matter what we go through in life, you know, some people, they raise their hands when they're worshiping the Lord. Some people don't even sing. You know, I, I've known a lot of people. I, I look, you know, I've looked around in church all of these years being a believer. And some people, they just don't even sing. But they do love the Lord. And for whatever reason, they don't want to sing. I don't know. I pray that they would. But the point is, you will be mocked for your worship of the Lord, whether it's your morning quiet time, whether it's if you choose to fast, whether it's um, saying no to drinking alcohol, whether it's no to certain lifestyles. You know, I have been mocked for things. I've been mocked for not allowing Olivia to watch R-rated movies. We still don't watch R-rated movies in our home. Why? Because for as me and my house, we will serve the Lord and we choose to not put that stuff in, in front of our face, in front of our eyes. But I've been mocked for that. I've been called religious, religious freak, um, hyper-spiritual, self-righteous. And you know what? It's okay because we are in good company when we're with this girl who loved the Lord. She gave her everything to the Lord. And I pray we would do the same. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful Wednesday rainy day. You have blessed our land with rain. It says in the scriptures that if we seek your kingdom first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you, Lord. And you said in um, Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. And in that discourse, Solomon asks if there's no rain and if there's drought and if there's need, then you will open the windows of heaven and you will pour out rain. I remember being a little girl learning about the water cycle and the precipitation and the dew on the ground. And But you're the one, Lord, that has created the water cycle. You're the one that creates the rain to water the earth. And I thank you for the rain, Lord. I thank you for these beautiful birds in my backyard eating bird seeds and, and splashing in this rain. And, and they're not worried about drought and they're not worried about eating food. And you provide for the birds. You provide for us so wonderfully. Forgive us of our sins, of our flesh, God. You are a holy God. You told Moses, take off your sandals for this is holy ground. And he said, what is your name? And you said, I am that I am, Yahweh. I am who I am. I'm the always was, always is, always will be, Lord. And we as um, frail humans who have a birth date and a death date, death date. We don't understand that, but we know that you're eternal and we know that you never change. And we know that you always were, that there is no creation. Every Sunday school teacher has probably had one or more children said, who made God? You have no beginning. You have no end. You're Al Olam, everlasting God, Al Shaddai, God Almighty, Adonai, our master, Al Roy, the God who sees, Al Kana, jealous God, Jehovah Nisi, your banner of love covers us, Hashem, the name above all names, Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah Makadishem, the Lord who sanctifies us, you are the bread of life. 
the living water. Thou, O Lord, are a shield about me. You're my glory and the lifter of my head. You are the one that we can say, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For to those who fear him, there is no want. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they who seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good Thing. And to that we say hallelujah. Thank you, God, that in you there's fullness of joy. Thank you, God, that in your presence we have all that we need, all that we want. You are Jehovah Shalom, our perfect peace. You are a prince of peace. You are the ancient of days, the just judge, the righteous one. Lord, by your stripes we're healed and we're made whole. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned each one to his and to her own wicked ways. But God, you laid on him, Jesus Christ the righteousness the our sins on him that we might become the righteousness of God thank you Lord for the imputed righteousness Lord we could never do it thank you for the book of Romans as we've been studying it at Calvary Chapel Pomona Valley on Sunday mornings I have been just blessed and eating it up Lord like candy like food like bread like what just the most delicious food reading through the word and listening and learning from Romans God thank you thank you Jesus that you became the last Adam and you put on us the righteousness of Christ the perfect Adam thank you thank you thank you Lord Father forgive us of all of our sins forgive us of our trespasses Lord Father, we just worship you. You are our Father who is in heaven. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we want to pray for this um, terrible situation that's been going on in the San Bernardino Mountains. People have died, Lord. And I thank you that people are able to get down off that mountain. My precious sister in Christ, Maria, was able to get back into her house. Thank you for that. But there's been devastation, Lord. There's been people that have not been able to work. There have been people that have not had food, people that have died. I pray for the comfort of all of those. I pray for the first responders. I pray for the churches up there that have been giving out food. I thank you so much, Lord, for this beautiful church, Calvary Chapel in the San Bernardino Mountains, giving out food. Bless them, be with them, help them, equip them pour out your abundant blessings upon them lord i want to pray right now for calvary chapel ontario and our beloved terry Yersioli as she's grieving and mourning the death of her husband pastor mike would you comfort his wife right now terry would you comfort his children his grandchildren the church lord so many people loved pastor mike and were mentored by him and received from him the good word that he preached all of his life, God, all of his saved life. Thank you for him. Thank you for these godly men that will teach your word line upon line, precept upon precept, Lord. And I just pray that you would raise up a new leader to step up and teach your word. I pray for his service here in March, that you would bless it, that you would bless the speakers, those will, that will give the eulogy. I can't even imagine, Lord, how difficult it must be and I just pray for comfort. I pray for this woman, Danielle of Calvary Chapel, Apple Valley, and her um, husband, I think his name is Greg. I pray for Danielle, Lord, as she had bone marrow transplant at the City of Hope, and then she also contracted COVID, and I heard that she is in a, a coma. I pray for Danielle. I pray for a healing over her from her head to her feet, Jesus. Be with her. Minister to her. Help her, Lord God. I pray for um, our beautiful sister in Christ, Olivia Cleland. I thank you, Lord, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and you know the beautiful day Olivia was born, and you know all of her life dates and you know the last day that she will breathe her last and you have much more work for our sister olivia to do lord cancer it does not have the last word over olivia's life in the name of jesus be with her husband john i pray against the harmful effects and side effects of chemo i pray that they the key the side effects would be minimal and the good effects would be abundant heal her touch her minister to her be with her give her songs in the night help her lord jesus i pray also for lance and christina wolf and so many others battling cancer miss odom lord jesus comfort them touch them be with them do a mighty work lord that they would um live and that you would extend their days and their life lord father we pray for those in the middle east that are suffering from that terrible um 
earthquake. We pray for revival. We pray for repentance. We pray for hearts to be bent towards you, Lord. I thank you for the beautiful work of Jessica Shahomi and the team as they minister to Muslims in Arizona. I don't know if they're back already or they're still there, but I just thank you for those that will minister to Muslims. I thank you for those that will go out and minister in front of Planned Parenthoods and, and pray that you would shut down these horrible um, death um, destructive places. I thank you for those that will go out and will just be bold in fighting for life, Lord. I thank you for our pastor, Joseph Tata. Would you bless him? Would you be with him? Be with his wife, his beautiful children. I pray for our church family. I pray for all the churches, Calvary Montclair, Calvary Chino Hills, Chino Valley, Ontario, Upland, Rancho, Living Way in Fontana, all of the churches in this local area and, and in California, in the United States and the world. We know the church is not just one location. The church is the body of Christ. And Father, we might be weak and frail. We might even be homebound. I think of so many people that can't leave their home. Like uh, my beautiful sister, Shami, as she tends to her husband, Yoon. I pray that they would be blessed as they listen to worship music, as they listen to teachings. Thank you that Bible teachings are streamed online so we could listen and follow along. I am so blessed and thankful for that, Father. There's been many Sundays that I've been home with Isaac and not able to leave the house. So I pray you would continue to bless the live streaming, that you would allow those that are homebound and can't leave their home. Maybe they're in a wheelchair or maybe they're caregiving for someone or maybe they're elderly and they just can't drive anymore that you would bless them but for those of us that can get out and can attend church that you would be with us that you would give us a holy boldness to grab our bibles grab our car keys and get to church lord god whenever it is sundays thursdays tuesdays wednesdays whenever we can i thank you that i'm able to go to church on sundays now as chuck cares for Isaac and tends to our son Isaac and that I'm able to go to the second service and listen. Thank you for that, God. I do not take it lightly. I am so incredibly blessed and thankful for that. Father, be with my husband in the battles of the mind as he is a man of God. He reads your word. He studies your word. He loves to teach your word. I pray that you would strengthen him, keep him healthy, Lord, keep his blood pressure in a good healthy numbers, God, help him. Help my husband. Please, Jesus, you are the God of the mind. You said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Help my husband's mind. Help him to take every thought captive. For those praying with me right now that struggle with anxiety or depression or um, yucky thoughts or uh, spiritual warfare, I pray that you would help them take every thought captive under the obedience of Christ. Please, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I just pray, Father, for those with upcoming court dates, with upcoming work meetings. My sister Patsy, she has an important work meeting tomorrow. Be with her. Strengthen her. Bless her. Give her calm. Give her peace. Would you mute the lying lips, God? I pray, Father, for, um, I praise you for Isaac's IEP, that it went well yesterday, over two hours of meetings, meeting for Isaac, and it went great. And I just give you honor. I give you praise. I exalt your name. I thank you, Jesus, for taking care of my sweet boy. He's special, Lord. And there was so many things that were spoken that made me just want to cry. They talked about his future. They talk about he could go to school until he's over 20. And it was just overwhelming me. He's only 15. Who in the freshman year is talking about conservatorships and um, regional center and when they're over 18 and um, getting a graduate certificate instead of a diploma, Lord, it was overwhelming and it's still overwhelming but I know Lord that you're gonna help Chuck and I just take it day by day one day at a time that's all we got you said sufficient of the day is the troubles thereof so Lord one day at a time Father we pray for the prodigals and there's so many I've been feeling very overwhelmed praying for prodigals I can't remember all the names so I pray God that I thank you Jesus that you live to make intercession for us and so we pray for the prodigals the ones that I'm thinking of right now for Brandon Amy's nephew Jesus Jesus, for all of my nieces, Amanda, Tishy, Nikki, Anissa, Lauren, um, Little Maddox, Juju, um, Tishy, Amanda, all of my nieces and my nephews and their um, significant others. I pray for Lisa's salvation, God. I know that there's no one beyond your grasp. I pray for Grace's daughter, Lord Bree. Touch her. 
Convict her. Bring her back to the fold, Lord. We know that you will leave the 99 for the one. I pray for Rob. I pray for Frank. I pray for Jose, for Annie, for Adil, Autumn, for Petey, Lord Jesus, for those that are backslidden, those that have walked away from you, those that are in bondage to drug and alcohol, for Juliana, Lord, for my friend Denise's um, son, for so many, those that are even walking the streets, not in their right mind and drugs and alcohol. You know who they are. We pray for them. Save them. Don't let them be cold as it's rainy. Bring them to a shelter, Lord. Those that are into drugs and into alcohol. Even my friend's dad that walked away from you. And I don't know if he's back at U-Turn for Christ. I don't know. But I pray for that man, Richard. I lift him up to you right now. I pray for those that are not walking with you. Or for those that have a middle of the road walk. Your word says, if we're lukewarm, you will spew us out of your mouth. So I pray that you would fire us up. We would be on fire for you, Jesus. I thank you for those that are doing good. I bless my, my daughter, Olivia. She said she's helping today with the blood drive at her school. I pray for those um, that will be giving blood, that they would not get nauseous or lightheaded, that they'd be able to donate that blood. Lord, that's what you did, Jesus. You gave of your blood for us. So how beautiful that they could have this blood drive today at Olivia's school. Would you bless that blood drive and that type O, type A, type B, all of those different blood types, they would get the blood that is needed, Father. We love you so much, God. There's nothing more than we want than to be in your presence. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We adore you. I pray for the widows today that are hurting for Angelina and Crystal and all of the widows. Bless the Mesa family as they serve you and our beautiful brother in Christ, Reuben, as he'll be leading worship this Sunday in New Jersey at their new church fellowship. Thank you so much for those that have answered the call to be your hands and feet and to do those things you've called them to do. And even us, as we pray for others, Lord, may these prayers be as incense rising before your throne. And if we prayed or said or thought anything that's not pleasing to you, shut it down. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.